I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. God has blessed us to be able to come together, 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 wherever we may be, just to come into worship. Welcome to our virtual Women and Men's Day service. Our theme for this year is See God's Will in All That You Do, taken from Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five through six. Oh, let us bow down and worship the Lord. Let us bow down before him and let us be gracious to him. For this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture reading this morning is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. The word of God for the people of God. Dear God, I thank you for a new day that is filled with different possibilities. I pray that you, Lord, will perform miracles in the life of our men and women and children and our leaders. I pray that any mountain that sets before us would be reduced to stepping stones. As today began and end, Lord, let us sing praises to your holy name. Please let miracles, blessing, and divine protection be on each one of us today. I exalt you, Lord, and I thank you for grace and mercy. Father, please bless our shepherd as he tends to lead us. Bless the messenger today as she proclaim your word. Father God, in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll hear from our First Lady, Reverend Sharon Cully, who will come to give us words and announcement. Good morning. And may I say congratulations on your Women and Men's Day for the year 2020. I first want to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing me to be here today, for allowing me to be the First Lady of the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. I also want to thank the men for honoring us on this day. And last but not least, I want to thank my husband for giving me the opportunity to say thank you to all the women of Mount Pleasant. Being that I'm not the preacher of the day, I only have about a minute to say what's on my heart. So let me do the best that I can. I came to this church over 12 years ago, or going over on 12 years ago, and I met a group of wonderful people. I met a group of wonderful women. I have had my turn and my experiences of women in many churches, and yet none could I find that are like the women of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. You are truly a spiritual, uplifting woman, you are women that we can pray together, rejoice together, that we can celebrate Christmas holidays together, that we can be real people as we saw Jesus in the scriptures. As you continue on in your ministries of caring for the sick and the shut-in, for calling those who need to hear and ear, for providing services for those on Sundays who, can't, who don't have access to a computer, you have been doing the work that God has proclaimed for us to do. You are that virtuous woman that without you, many things would not have gotten done from the foundation of Mount Pleasant to this very day. So as we move on, I just want to thank you for allowing me this opportunity to celebrate with you, to tell you that I love you more than I can ever imagine, and that God will continue to bless you and use you Yes, we are not in the building, but the church is still in the house. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen. 
Here is our men's tribute this morning. Uh, our men's tribute is a tribute to the women of the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, developed by Brother Lloyd Cooper.
We would like to thank the men for this tribute honoring the women who do, do work around the church. May God bless our women as they put their faith in action. And may God bless our, our brothers for putting that together. Amen? Amen. offering time and I know some of you all are saying boy he finally changed his shirt yes I did now you will probably see this shirt for the next three or four weeks but anyway it's offering time it gives you an opportunity to give back a portion of what God has blessed you with we're so thankful that our members are tithers and they are sending in their tithes and those of you who are not members who are watching this this service we're asking that you support this service by sending in your contribution. You can do it one of three ways. If you're near the church, around the church, you can always make a deposit in the mailbox at the church. The church is there. Also, if you would like to mail in, send in a check or a money order, we'd be happy to receive it. The address is on the screen, 1087 Grove Avenue, Edison, New Jersey. 08820. 
Also, those of you who would like to use your credit card, you can also send a donation in using PayPal. Uh, you can accept all of the major credit cards, and we're so happy to receive contributions from you. So we know that you're going to be faithful, obedient to God's will to give children. So let us now pray over this offering. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for these who have given back a portion of what you have blessed them with. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you bless it, consecrate it, let it be multiplied tenfold. Surely, Heavenly Father, so we can use it here on earth for your kingdom. We ask now that you bless it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You are cordially invited to join our Sunday school class, each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. It is a great way to fellowship with your fellow members, and, see how God's words can sustain you, during these trying times. So, please call the church, and leave your name and email address on the answering machine. If you do not have an email address, you can join the class, using your telephone. Rev. Johnson will be happy to send you, a Zoom invitation, or call you and provide a telephone call-in number. We look forward to seeing you. When God's Word goes forward, it will not come back void. Our worship services are televised during the week on Edison TV services. Our service can be seen on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., and Monday at 6.30 p.m. on cable channels 15 and 45. The service is also available on Edison Demand TV. Please tell your friends. That is, Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., and Monday at 6.30 p.m. on cable channels 15 and 45. The service is also available on Edison Demand TV. This is a new month that God has blessed us with, and we would like to recognize those members who are celebrating a birthday in October, Deaconess Leola Venable, Tuesday, October 6th, Rev. Sharon Johnson, Wednesday, October 7th, Sister Charlene Marlowe, Friday, October 9th, Sister Janet Snowden Brown, Sunday, October 11th, Sister Leslie Cooper, Monday, October 19th, and, Sister Dory The Harris, Friday, October 30th. We wish those whose birthday has passed, a happy and prosperous belated, happy birthday. And, for those whose birthday is yet to come, we wish you a joyous and blessed day. Please continue to practice safe health behaviors during the coronavirus pandemic. Wash your hands frequently, wear a mask in public and avoid large gatherings. Let us now continue to celebrate the men and women of Mount Pleasant. God bless.
Today, we're celebrating our Women's Day. Our speaker today will be Reverend Dolly Hamlin from Ruth Fellowship Church, Plainfield, New Jersey. Our theme is, for the women and the men's day is, seek God's will in all that you do. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Yes. yes. To God be the glory. Yes. It gives me great honor to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. And to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the head of my life. Yes. To the great pastor of this church, Reverend Tom Cully. Yes. To the officers, the members and friends. God bless you. God bless you. I thank God again for the opportunity to be here. I thank God for my pastor, Reverend Tracy L. Brown, who is also the moderator of Middlesex Central Baptist Association for even allowing me to be here. So I want to thank her. God is so good. God is so good. He does great and wonderful things. And and, and it is an honor to be with you here this morning on your Men and Your Women's Day yes. celebration. <laughs> what a wonderful day to celebrate, to come together as one yes. in the body of Christ. Well, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. And you that have your Bibles, our scripture reading will be from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 4. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. Everyone have it? Say amen. amen. And the word says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I do thank you once again for the opportunity yes, to stand in John's shoes, yes, Lord. to preach the word to a people, Lord Father God, who you have a desire to raise up to a higher level in you. Lord, so I pray that this word would accomplish that, Lord Father God. And not only that, Lord, but I pray that the word, Lord Father God, would touch the heart of someone who needs encouragement, would touch the heart of someone, Lord Father God, who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins. Yes. Lord, and they will come running asking, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Lord, I thank you now. Anoint me afresh, Lord Father God, that I may be the servant that you have called me to be. Yes. And that the voice will go forth with power and conviction. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And uh, I've tagged this text with a title, Put Your War Clothes On. Yes. <laughs> Put Your War Clothes On. Amen. Now I've heard a lot of great things about the men and the women of Mount Pleasant. You have a desire to serve the Lord. You're finding out what your gifts are. You're walking out your calling. But we know that as we do that, there's still going to be opposition. Amen. That's right. The enemy Amen. is still going to be on our tracks. Yes. And we can't get too comfortable. We have to learn each and every day to put our war clothes on. Amen. Amen. In this chapter, Paul is defending his apostleship. In order to understand what he said in this verse, you have to understand that people had said to him, well, this Paul is not a very imposing looking man. In fact, 
His speech is not very powerful. His letters are weighty and strong, but his presence is weak, and his voice is not so good. Paul is writing to them and saying in defense of his apostleship, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. All right. I want you to notice a few things in this text that are very thought-provoking. First, there is a war going on. Yes. A lot of folks don't seem to know that to be a Christian is to be engaged in a warfare. Yes. And the Bible describes that warfare when Paul wrote to a young preacher named Timothy. Yes. He said, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Yes. He was saying, young preacher, you are in a battle, in a warfare, and it is not going to be a picnic. Paul wrote to this same young preacher, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, what are soldiers for? The soldiers we know in today's army, they're not just on parade. They are to carry a gun and they have to fight. Soldiers are to engage in warfare. Many of the Lord's people don't know that they are in a warfare. Mm -hmm. Revelations 12 and 7 says there was a war in heaven. Mm -hmm. We think about heaven as a place of peace, but God talks about a war there. Yeah. Now, that does, it doesn't stand to reason that on this earth, Christians are going to be engaged in a warfare. Mm -hmm. Paul was always conscious of this warfare. At the end of his life's journey, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Yes. Notice in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. God says to every Christian, put on the armor. Why an armor? Because you are a soldier. Why armor? Because you are in a battle. A spiritual war is going on. God says so. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a battle against people. This is not a battle against mere human beings. We are in a warfare against supernatural forces. Do you feel like you're in a conflict sometimes? Do you realize you are in a spiritual conflict, which is a great age-long struggle? Sometimes we get it mixed up. We put our mouths on people and try to tear them down when we're in a spiritual warfare. We have to be careful about what we say about one another because each of us belong to God. We are his chosen people. So we should not be tearing one another down. We should be lifting each other up. We shouldn't be talking about what's going on in this household and that household. We should be lifting up the word of God and praying and believing that God is going to deliver all of us out of whatever situation we find ourselves in. There by the grace of God go I. That's right. That's right. That's right. What is it all about? It is about who shall have supremacy. There's a war going on between Christ and Satan. Yes. It is a struggle for the souls of men. Yes. It is a battle to keep people out of hell. Yes. It is a struggle to keep people saved. It is a warfare, a conflict until the final finish. And every one of us is engaged in it. Do you realize that you are in a warfare? You are in a warfare. You are in a warfare every day. The average Christian is not a soldier. Okay. And that's because they don't know who they really are. All right. He doesn't have on any of his armor. Uh -huh. He or she is not really engaged in a spiritual struggle. He is not fighting anything. 
not really standing for anything. And if we don't stand for something, we're apt to fall for anything, and we're apt to die for nothing. If this Bible makes anything clear, it is that God's people are in a spiritual struggle against the forces of evil. And they are supernatural forces that operate in the realm of darkness. And we are to penetrate them with the light of Christianity. We are in a warfare that ought to keep us from sitting back, folding our hands, and taking it easy. That ought to make us sit up and take notice. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Amos 6 and 1 tells us. And while the Christian church and the people of God are taking it easy, the forces of evil are at work like never before. Like never before. We have to be about God's business. We have to be at work for the Lord. At work through our families. At work through our jobs, at yes. work in the community. We have to be at work and not just taking it easy. Mm -hmm. God help us to realize we are in a warfare, mm -hmm. in a battle. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. That leads me to my second point. We have the weapons. Mm -hmm. The Lord didn't leave us without something to fight with. He says a Christian can be dressed up in an armor. When I read about the seven great implements of that armor, how we have to put on a helmet of salvation. We have to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We have to shod our feet with the salvation of the gospel. We have to carry the sword. We have to loin our, uh, uh, gird our loins with the truth of God's word. We have to be prepared and not just on Sunday, not just when it's time for Bible study, but we have to be prepared every single day. And when we dress ourselves, I find only one place that we're undefended, and that is in the small of our back. But you don't need anything there if you are facing in the right direction. If you are not running, you don't need to worry about getting hit in that place. Oh, with the weapons the Lord has given us. Oh, with the weapons he has already given us, we have the weapons to win. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yes. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. According to the Bible, some of the things Christians think are important in serving God don't mean one thing. And as men and women of God, we have to understand what our position is and be on the battlefield. I have heard folks say, oh, she is such a talented Christian. Talent has nothing to do with it. Talent has nothing to do with serving the Lord. It is not even mentioned in the Bible. Talent in the Bible means a piece of money. And talent, as we know it, is never referred to in the word of God. Amen. Weapons of our warfare are not physical. They are mighty through God. Personality has nothing to do with it. Good looks don't have anything to do with it. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Many a Christian is trying to fight a spiritual battle with carnal, fleshly, worldly weapons. You are not going to win that way. As I already said, you can't win by tearing somebody else down with your mouth. You just won't win. Because I can just stand still and watch you do circles around me, and the salvation of the Lord will prevail. Hallelujah. When there is a conflict between two Christians, a lot of people set about to win it with physical weapons. It is not done that way. Understand, church, it's not done that way. And the church in its conflict against the forces of evil is not going to win with physical weapons. You know you can have the finest buildings in the world. You can have the most beautiful church in the world, but that will not win the battle. It is a spiritual battle. So the weapons a 
of our warfare are not physical but are mighty through God. What are they? The Lord has given us something to fight with. It is amazing, astounding, pathetic, and pitiful how little the average Christian uses the weapons the Lord has given him to fight his warfare. First of all, there is the word of God. There is absolutely nothing in this world like it. From Genesis to Revelation, the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. The word of God, we should hide it in our heart that we would not sin against him. The word of God is quick and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. The fight of the sun to the soul and spirit, even to the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Chapter 6 of Ephesians tells us that one of our weapons is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Can you imagine a fellow going off to fight and not having a sword? He is to have it in his heart, in his life, and in his mind. But the average Christian does not use the weapon of the word of God. When the devil came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness three times from one Old Testament book, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And when Jesus met the devil, he unsheathed his sword and fought the devil with the word of God. There is no other way for the Christian to fight. That is why I have said all these years in my life that a Christian who does not have the habit of daily reading the word of God for his own benefit is not going to be a strong Christian. Hallelujah. Years ago, I learned what I believe to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest lessons I've ever learned. I was reading my Bible the first day of January many years ago in the old building that used to stand. It was reading the first Psalm. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but in the light is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A tree planted by a river is an evergreen. It reaches its roots down into the moist soil, draws food from that soil, and stands strong on the riverbank that bringeth forth fruit in his season. He is a fruit-bearing Christian. His leaf also shall not wither. He doesn't turn one color one day and another color the next. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I wanted to say to myself, am I reading this right? The Christian who delights himself in this book, whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. If you will make the Bible the book of your life, whatsoever you do shall prosper. I made a covenant with God. Hallelujah. And we all should make a covenant with God. And I said, oh God, if you will help me, I will make the Bible the book of my life. I will read it every day. And I will hear what you have to say to me. I will read it and I'll know I'll hear from heaven. And by God's grace and by God's help, he's allowing that to come to fruition. God has given you the weapon of the word. Get out that Bible. Open it up every day and read it for yourself. If you don't do it, you are a soldier without a sword. The weapons of our warfare are not physical, but are mighty through God. We're more than conquerors. God has already laid the plan. He's made the way through his word. All we have to do is follow it. No foe can stand against the church of Jesus Christ. If the church is apparelled in the armor of the Lord and fighting with its weapons, and we have guaranteed victory. This is what I really love about the text this morning. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. If you go home with nothing else, know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God is guaranteeing that if you use his weapons, not your own weapons,
weapons. If you use his weapons, you will win. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Use them. Use them every day. And things and situations in your life will fall into place. Use them and your enemies will start falling all around you. Use them and God will bless you. God's hand is mighty. God's hand is mighty. My friends, my sisters, and my brothers, I don't care what the circumstances are. You might have made an attempt at being a Christian before. I mean a real Christian. You may be even called a backslider. Or you may have never been saved. But I say to you in Jesus Christ, there is victory for you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Put your war clothes on and fight the good fight. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what anybody has to say about you. Just look to the hills from which cometh your help and believe with all your heart that your help cometh from the Lord. He is the one who created you. He is the one who has ordained you to walk through this earth preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and letting the dying world know that Jesus saves, that Jesus delivers, that Jesus heals, and that he sets free. You don't have to stay in the situation that you're in. You can't be delivered. You can't be healed. The word says, is any sick among you in James 5? If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and they'll come and they'll lay hands on you. They'll anoint you with oil and they'll pray the prayer of faith that you might be healed. So know that the word is for you. It's not against you. Know that the word will take you from a one place to a higher place. Study the word. Study the word day and night. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that need is not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This word is truth. Yes. This word yes. is a deliverer. This word is a healer. And why? Because Jesus died on Calvary for the remission of our sins. We no longer have to stay the same way we are. We can come up higher in him. From glory to glory. From grace to grace. His mercies are new every morning. I thank God when I wake up in the morning. God, hallelujah. Follow my footsteps. Show me which way you want me to go. Tell me who you want me to speak to. Set up those divine encounters so I can be a blessing to you, Lord, and you alone. I don't care who sees me on the street giving a beggar a dollar because what I know, I'm nothing but a beggar trying to tell another beggar about Jesus Christ. So give God your best. Seek his face. Put your war clothes on. Get your instructions from the Lord, and he will see you through this battle. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I tell you, this was a glorious day uh, celebrating the Women and Men's Day. And we just want to thank everyone who came out to celebrate with us. Amen to that. I want to thank uh, Reverend Hamlin. Reverend Hamlin uh, was going to be here this morning with us uh, live but uh, she was involved in an automobile accident, and on last Wednesday we spoke, and she was at a point where she just could not uh, be here in person. But I told her that uh, that's all right. We would just go ahead and use one of her recordings uh, of an earlier time when she was at the church, and she said, oh, that would be just great, and she thanked us for, for being able to do that. And uh, But she really wanted to be here, and she was going to be here, but uh, she's okay. It wasn't as serious, but it is, uh, you know, when you in an accident and you get jawed around a little bit, you really don't feel like being up and around until those muscles get back in shape. So we want to just thank her for that. Uh, I also want to thank the women and the men of this church. They just work so hard to 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 
do the, the works of the church and to live up to the teachings of Jesus and to go out and to help other people, not just here in these four walls, but go outside and try to help those who need help. So I just want to thank them uh, for all of what they do. Uh, First Lady, Reverend Sharon Colley and I are very fortunate that we are at a church where the men and women uh, do not hesitate to do the works of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and they just did a great job, and I just thank them for that. Also, uh, no, I don't want to embarrass her, but I need you all to know that we have a, a, a member in our church <clears throat> who joined this church in 1940, which means that she has been a member of this church continually for 80 years. And we just want to let uh, Deaconess uh, Leola Venable know how much we appreciate and, and love her and the perseverance and the stamina. You know, some people can't stay at a church eight minutes and maybe eight days, and she's been here 80 years years and we just wherever you are i think you need to just applaud her for the blessings of the lord has allowed her to be in one place that length of time and she is a worker in the church so we are just happy for that we had a glorious time we uh uh uh, uh saw all of what the men <laughs> that was a pretty good presentation that the men put together to give tribute to the women of the church and the women came right back with the faith in action, showing all of the things that they do in the church and outside of the church. And we just thank them for all of their creativity and all of what they were able to do. We're going to ask now if Reverend Hamlin would come back for our benediction. But while I'm here, I just want to let you know that if you would like to join this church and become a member of this church, you can do so very easily by contacting me either by email, telephone, or leaving a message at the church, whichever way you want to do it. If you uh, have never been baptized, we will baptize you. If you have been baptized and you've just been away from a church, you can come on your Christian experience. But uh, And even in this virtual state that we're in, if you would like to become a virtual member under Watch Care, you can do that. So if you believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross, Spent three days in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day arose with all power. And we know, we know that you uh, have salvation. Amen? Amen. We want to thank all who participated, because you know that uh, third chapter of Proverbs, uh, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all uh, acknowledge him and always acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That is a favorite scripture of mine and, and I'm so happy to see that the women and the men use that as their theme for today. God bless you and have a great day and now I will have Reverend Hamlin to come back to close us out. Reverend Hamlin, God bless you. Again, to God be the glory for the great things he has done. Again, to you, uh, Reverend Cully, thank you again for the invitation. Thank you for allowing me to stand in your pulpit. I don't take it for granted. Uh, if we would all stand. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for this service. We thank you for this worship experience, Lord. We now ask you to bless the food that have been prepared, Lord Father God. Bless the hands who prepared it. And we ask you, Lord, that the food would be made nourishment for our bodies. And we thank you for it. Now with uplifted hands, bowed heads, and humble hearts, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with his people, both now and forever. And the church sang all together. Amen.